Hi guys, in this section, we'll be looking at how to access and modify data in NumPy arrays. We'll see how to access single elements and a subset of elements in a NumPy array. Along with that, we will also see how to modify elements in a NumPy array. Let's start by creating a dummy array of size 4 by 5 by 6 by using this function np.random.rand. What this means is that we have now created four batches, each having a 5 by 6 array. Now let's get to the indexing part. N of 1, 2, 3. Remember that the NumPy arrays are zero indexed. So when I say that I want to access the N of 1, 2, 3, we are looking at the second batch. We are trying to access the third row and the fourth column. Let's look at this. This is the zeroth index, n of zero, n of one. The second row, that is zeroth row, first row, and second row. And then the third column, this is the zeroth column, the first column, second column, and the third column. So this is what needs to be returned over here. This is exactly what we get. We uh, be careful that the indexes being specified is within the given dimensions. So you cannot access elements outside of the dimensions given here. In this case, we use indexing to access single values, but if we want to access a subset of values or a subset of arrays from a large array, we'll have to slice it. There are different ways of slicing an array. Let's look at slicing along a batch. So if we want, all the elements in the first batch that is present at index zero, we can do something like this. What this says is that give me all the rows and give me all the columns present at index zero. This is same as saying give me n of zero. So what this means is that we'll go to n of zero and let's take all the rows and all the columns. So this is exactly what will be returned in this case. We can see that here. We can also uh, slice along the rows and along the columns. In this case, we'll be taking all of the rows from 0 to 2 and all of the columns from 0 to 3. Since we know that when we specify a range, the last value is going to be excluded. So this is going to be a subset of this array. What we are going to do is we are going to take the 0th row, the first row, and the second row. And from each of these three rows, we are going to take the zeroth column, the first column, the second column, the third column. We can verify these values with the values given over here. The same can be confirmed for all of the other rows. We can also slice along multiple batches. What this is saying is that from all of the batches, give me the value present at the third row and the fourth column. Remember that again over here, it is going to be indexed, indexing zero. If you want to look at this from the one indexing, we basically want to return all of the elements present in the fourth row and the fifth column in each of the batch. So let's see what this means. So in each of the batch, so from the zeroth batch, we'll go to the third row, zeroth row, first row, second row, and third row, and the fourth column. 0th column, 1st column, 2nd column, 3rd column, and the 4th column. So this will be returned, this will be returned, this will be returned, and this will be returned. We can confirm the last value. It is 0 0.699. We can confirm all of the value, other values as well. The last thing in slicing is slicing along an interval. This can be used when we want values that are evenly spaced along a dimension. If no start value is given, it's default as zero. If no end value is given, it's default as the last value. In this case, what we want to do is we want to print every other batch. So basically starting from the zero batch, since this is the syntax, there is no end given. So that is going to be the last batch of the n array. Basically, we want to start from the zeroth batch. We want to go till the end of the array. 
and we want to skip over every other batch. We want to take an interval of two. What this basically means it will start at zero. We'll get this entire batch. We'll take a jump of two and then we'll print this batch. So these both batches will be printed. No other batch will be printed because taking a jump of two reaches us to the end of the array. N. So we don't have anything after that. In this case, we are slicing along the rows and columns as well. So like before, we will get every other batch. So, and then we'll get all of the rows indexed from one to three, since the last value will be excluded. And the column starting at column index one, and we'll skip over every other batch as we go along. So we'll get the first column, we'll skip over the second column, we'll get the third column, so on and so forth. Let's look at what this means. Since we've already uh, accessed zero of, with an interval of two, like all of the batches with an interval of two, we've got the results over here. We'll just look at what the result of this is. We'll get all of the rows starting from one to three. So one, two, and three, since it is indexed at zero, and then every other column starting at one. So this will be returned since we have to start at one. This is zero, one. We'll skip over this, we'll take two jumps, and this will be returned. We'll take two jumps, and this will be returned. So we can confirm this answer from here, and we can do the same for all the rest of the rows as well. So well, let's look at modifying NumPy arrays. I didn't want to make a mess of the original array, so I've just created a copy of the original array, and I've kept it in n copy with the help of this function np.copy. So let's see if the value present at 2, 4, 1 in the n copy and n are equal or not. As we can see, they are equal. This we have done with the help of this equals to sign. This double equals to just checks for equality on both sides. Now we will change the value of 2, 4, 1 in n copy and we'll change it to 0 0.005. And now we'll again check if the values in both of those arrays at both of the positions are same or not. So n copy of 2, 4, 1 equal to equal to n of 2, 4, 1. That will give us false now, since this value has been changed. Let's see if the value has actually been changed in n copy by just printing it out. So you just printed this out and we can see that it has actually been changed. Along with modifying a single value in an element, in, a, in an array, we can actually um, modify an entire row in an array. In this case, we've taken the two comma three row in n copy and n. What this means is that we'll go in the second row, second batch, zero batch, first batch, and second batch, and the third row. Zero row, first row, second row, and third row. So this entire row has been printed out over here. And both of these rows, we've checked for equality on for each of the elements in this in this row for both n copy and n. As you can see, both of those, all of the values in both of those elements are same. So it is printing trues. Now we change n copy of 2 comma 3 as 0 0.5. So we'll go in the second batch and the third row in n copy and we'll change that entire row, all of the elements in that row to be 0 0.5. So we've changed all the values to 0 0.5. And now we'll check if the values in n copy 2 comma 3 and n of 2 comma 3 are equal or not. As now we can see both of these values are different. It will return false for all of the values. This is all for this section. Thank you guys.